Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. And welcome to this edition of The Ford Report. Now joining us is Glenn Ford. He joins us from Plainfield, New Jersey. He is the co-founder and executive editor of The Black Agenda Report. And of course, he's a regular contributor to The Real News. Thanks for being with us, Glenn. Thank you for the invitation. So, Glenn, big news today um, in terms of the Ferguson story. Attorney General Eric Holder says he'll launch a broad civil rights investigation into the Ferguson Police Department. Um, just give our viewers sort of a reminder about where things are at in terms of the investigation that the FBI is conducting, um, looking specifically into the shooting of the teenager Michael Brown. And what's the significance of this new investigation that the Justice Department is putting together? Well, I don't know if it's big news, but it's certainly uh, big noise. As you said, this is in addition to the investigation into that individual officer's killing of, of Michael Brown. Uh, this uh, new Justice Department probe uh, will try to find out whether there's been a pattern and practice of the abuse of black people's civil rights uh, in Ferguson. And they, they should have lots of evidence to sift through. Uh, for example, there's the case of the uh, black man who was beaten bloody uh, and then was charged with destruction of public property because uh, his blood soiled uh, policemen's uh, uniforms. Uh, so uh, they, they've got a lot of stuff uh, to do in, in Ferguson. Uh, but I think we need to look at a larger picture and, uh, and uh, I, I think it's relevant here to, to talk about what the uh, NAACP Legal Defense Fund uh, asked of the Justice Department in a letter to uh, Eric Holder, the Attorney General, last week. Uh, they want a kind of automatic triggering mechanism to be put in place so that the Justice Department uh, would launch a review every time an unarmed black person is shot down uh, by police. And so I asked the official of the uh, LDF uh, if they understood that that would trigger uh, literally hundreds of reviews a year. And she said, uh, yes, they realize that, but uh, if that's what it takes, then that's what should be done. Well, what would that take? Uh, it would, if it ever happened, uh, require the addition of literally hundreds of new lawyers to the Justice Department with more than a thousand supporting uh, personnel. Uh, this would cost uh, tens of millions of dollars and it would take the kind of commitment that no administration uh, has shown in modern American uh, history. Uh, but that's what the LDF uh, proposes and people should of course uh, support that. Uh, however, what are the obstacles to successfully uh, uh, prosecuting a police officer for using deadly force. The New York Times has a very interesting article out this week uh, in which it notes that the state of Florida, which is not the worst, not the best, uh, pretty indicative of Southern justice, certainly, the state of Florida has not even charged, much less tried, a single police officer in 20 years for using deadly force uh, against a civilian, not once in 20 years. And Florida doesn't really uh, stand out uh, too far from other states. The truth of the matter is that it is so difficult for a variety of political as well as legal reasons, and I think one should emphasize the politics because that's where law comes from, but for political uh, reasons, it's so difficult uh, to prosecute uh, a police officer, that if the Justice Department uh, wanted to uh, tackle a real broad spectrum of abuses uh, of the Michael Brown variety, they would have to go up against uh, the uh, legal armadas and the budgets of literally every state, uh, county, and city government in the country, all of which would be standing behind their police forces. And I don't see any U.S. Justice Department taking on uh, the various strata of government all around the country. Uh, I was just talking to a friend who happens to be uh, a human rights activist, uh, and she just came back from Geneva, Switzerland, uh, where 
uh, she and her colleagues have been pressing a committee of the United Nations uh, to uh, declare that the United States systematically abuses the civil rights of its uh, black citizens. And they've been making lots of progress in embarrassing at least the United States before uh, the uh, international community. And one of the uh, members of the UN committee uh, asked the question, whatever happened to that guy who killed Trayvon Martin? And when he asked that, a hush fell over the room. It was such a simple and straightforward question. Uh, and the answer, of course, was nothing happened to George uh, Zimmerman. Uh, you know, so I, in the beginning, you said this was big news, and I said it was a big noise. Uh, let's see uh, who's right. Okay, and Glenn, sort of, let's turn the corner a little bit and, and discuss how the mainstream press is covering this. So some people are arguing that the, this is a step in the right direction because now, you know, you can tackle what they're calling a broken system. Um, what, what's, you, what's your take on all of that? Yeah, I call this the MSNBC political conversation, but it applies uh, basically to all the media and to the general uh, discussion of criminal justice as it uh, transpires in the United States. Uh, there is the current, the school of thought that says that the criminal justice system is flawed, uh, but it can be fixed. Uh, and uh, those are the folks who are asking uh, for more uh, Justice Department uh, probes, uh, whether triggered by some kind of automatic mechanism or just ad hoc, uh, as, as we see the situation uh, so far. Uh, another school of thought says that the criminal justice system is broken. Uh, and needs a major uh, overhaul. And that's usually considered to be uh, a radical uh, position. Uh, but my position is that the system works just fine. It does exactly what it was designed to do. Uh, it acts with uniformity all across the United States and delivers, uh, uh, like clockwork, millions of black bodies uh, to be uh, incarcerated in the biggest gulag in the world. It does it quite uh, efficiency, efficiently. Uh, it costs a lot of money, but uh, the money that's spent uh, is made by somebody. Uh, and, and it's the uniformity, again, of the system that shows that it is a well-oiled uh, machine uh, that has been uh, working at the highest possible speed for the last 45 uh, years. Uh, that's not a broken system. If we look at it as a broken system, we're just going uh, to tinker with it. If we understand that it is a system uh, that is accomplishing uh, the mission of criminalizing a whole race of people, black folks, uh, then we have to look uh, in a much more uh, sy systemic, uh, societal-wide uh, way at what we do about a criminal justice system that is itself a criminal enterprise. But Glenn, what, what do you do then? Can we speak to specifics in terms of how do you fight this well-oiled machine, as you call it? The people who are the target of that well-oiled machine uh, have to mobilize. Uh, that's that's where the resistance comes from. And since they have declared and uh, uh, treat black people as if we are all criminals, uh, then it is incumbent upon all black folks uh, to resist that system. And that's what scares them. Uh, when Ferguson uh, stands out. Ferguson is thought to be possibly a kind of uh, benchmark uh, not because of what happened to Michael Brown, because that happens every damn day of the year. Ferguson is significant uh, because black people stood up and refused to stand down. They had curfews whipped on them and they did not respect them. Uh, they were intimidated by a militarized uh, force that uh, acted like it was Israeli in Gaza uh, and they did not back down. And so we, we saw that, that there is the potential, finally, after all these decades, uh, for there to be a mass kind of upswelling of, of resistance uh, among the targets of this criminal injustice system, which is black people as a whole. Now is the stage in which we do uh, discuss uh, what do the, those now uh, energized masses of folks 
uh, do about it on a tactical and strategic uh, basis. We can't do that today on the show. All right, Glenn. Well, we'll do that on the next time you're on. Hopefully, we'll get into some more specifics. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.